Michael Tech TV, and today we're going to cover woods ball strategies. Now, I told you guys um, quite a few times I tried doing woods ball strategy videos, and they just did not come out very well. What I'm going to hope to do is I'm going to try to just at least get the information in your hands, even though you may need some clarification on what exactly I'm talking about and stuff like that, but at least just try to get the information out there on what I was trying to show in the field. And... Uh, and then we can go back through and, and, and I'll try to, after doing some more thought into it, try to show how to do this on the field. Unfortunately, the camera that I use, the RCA Small Wonder, doesn't have a very good zoom feature. And I tried doing this in the woods and it just, it just didn't look very good at all. But moving forward, I'm going to try to do a series of maybe 10 to 15 different videos about woods ball. Now, I've been playing woods ball for years, okay? I actually play more woods ball than air ball. Um, to, to the surprise of a lot of people, okay, I've played at D-Day, I play at Wayne's World usually at least once or twice a year, I play at Camp Blanding, um, I play a lot of woods ball, I love it. My first woods ball tournament was in 1994 with Nemesis at World Cup in Orlando, okay, um, 1995 I played with the South Florida Vipers, and 1996 I played with the South Florida Vipers also at World Cup, um, I've played a ton of woods ball, okay, um, and something else I'm going to say before I go and start doing these videos is, I know what's going to happen. There's always going to be some schmuck that's going to come in here and it's like, well, I do it completely different. Okay, Mike is completely wrong. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I know how to do it. Well, guess what? If you're not making videos showing people how to do it, keep your fucking mouth shut. Okay, nobody cares what you think. Okay, so I got to put that out there going forward because there's always going to be some schmuck that nobody's heard about is going to pop on there and be like, I do it completely different, and Mike is completely wrong. No, do your own videos if you think you can do it better. So anyway, going forward, starting off in Woods Ball. Woods Ball, Woods Ball exists in two separate levels, okay? It's just like scenario games, okay? You have just to go out there and shoot them up level, which is the fun level, and then there's the other level where you can really just immerse yourself into the game, okay? It's like with scenario. When you go out there and you play the scenario games, you can really immerse yourself into the story, into getting the points, into winning the thing, or you can just go out there and just shoot everybody and, and, and ignore the whole storyline. Woods Ball is the same thing. You can go out there and just try to shoot everybody and just, you know, deal with one-on-one -on -one battles, or you can take it a step further and really try to plot and strategize out the game and really up, uh, up the number of kills that you can get. Now, the first thing I'm going to tell you, I'm going to have to use a notepad here, because I have a lot of stuff to cover with Woods Ball. This is probably going to be like a 10 or 15 episode show, at least, okay? The first thing I'm going to tell you, the beautiful part about Woods Ball is that whatever your strengths or, or weaknesses are, you can still turn everything around and be an amazing Woods Ball player, okay? If you're very fast and you like playing front, you're on point, okay? You can play Woods Ball and do really well at that. If you're a good mid player or cover player, maybe you don't have the speed to play as a front player, you can still be very good at that. If, if you're a big guy and you just don't move very well, or maybe your joints just aren't, you know, aren't like how they used to be, and you want to play back, you can still do that very, very well. So the biggest thing you need to do as a woods ball player is to take a look at yourself and see what do I feel the most comfortable at playing and then make yourself a better that player. Okay, so if you're better, if you think that you're better at playing front, like as a point guy, where you're just blitzing right down the field, okay, that then I'm going to give you tips on how to do that. If you think you're a better mid player, um, then I'm going to show you how tips on how to do that. If you think you'd be a better back player, I can show you how tips on how to do that. You can be an amazing front player, amazing mid player, amazing back player, but you have to figure out what kind of player you are first before you try to make yourself a better player. Now, I'm starting off. Point, okay, playing as a front player. That's generally what I play when I play woods ball. I'm a very aggressive woods ball player. But I gotta tell you that it comes with its risks, it comes with its 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 consequences, okay? I've fallen in the woods. Hardcore fallen in the woods. I've sprained ankles, I've rolled ankles, I've tripped, I've sprained my elbows, my knees, my shoulders, you name it, okay. Being a front player in woods ball is asking for a lot of trouble. You have to be very careful if you're doing uh, a playing front. Okay, one of the things I highly recommend getting are like a pair of the high tech boots that at least cover the ankles. You are going to be stepping on roots, um, you know, uh, little logs that are on the ground, little mounds and stuff like that. You have to be very careful when you're playing as a front player in woods because you're accelerating through the woods very quickly. You have to be very careful not only where you step 
but also your ankle support and, and making sure that there's no basically punji stick sticking out of the ground. Okay, I try when I play front, I try to plot my route ahead of time. You don't want to be playing front at a field that you have no idea where people are at or how the field is laid out because you fall on one of these sticks that are sticking up, it's going to punch you through your stomach. So you have to be very careful when playing aggressive front. Usually when I'm playing aggressive front or I'm playing aggressive, I'm playing point, I generally will almost pre-walk my route first to, to make sure that I know exactly where each one of my feet are going to step before I get to the place that I'm trying to get to. You have to be very careful. Okay, as a mid player, as a cover player, one of the most important things, and I'm going to go into, I'm going to do shows on individual things, but I'm just kind of getting some information out there with it. As a mid player, also known as a cover player, you're covering your front players. Now, one of the most important things when playing as a mid player is one, you need to, you need to stay with your front players, but also you need to make sure that your eyes are up and your gun is up at all times, okay? You're there to cover your front player. If you're looking at the ground and your gun is pointed at the ground and all of a sudden there's a shot from a sniper that takes out your front player, well, and you're not, and you have no idea you weren't prepared, you can't shoot back or anything like that, okay, well, you just, you haven't done your job as a mid player. So as a cover, as a mid, as a cover player, the most important thing to be is aware of your surroundings, aware of where to drop back, aware of where to flank left or right, of where to where to push, okay? How many people have moved over to that side of the field? Um, so awareness is huge and communication is huge as a mid player because you're not only communicating to your front players, but you're also communicating to your back players to let them know what's coming, okay? So mid players, the biggest thing is one, you've got to be a good communicator. Two, you need to also be able to be aware of what exactly is going on around you. You don't want to get tunnel vision of what's directly in front of you and all of a sudden you're getting flanked down the middle or you're getting flanked down the tape or they've swooped completely back around you. You need to keep an eye on your front player and at the same time you need to be looking around, not just what's in front of you. So a mid cover player, you need to be aware of everything that is happening and you need to be able to communicate to your front players and communicate to your back players. So now, back player, defense, okay? Um, also, some, some people will consider them the snipers, okay? The biggest thing with being this is you have to be patient, okay? There's going to be games where you're not going to be able to shoot anybody because your front and mid players went and, and took out the entire field. And there's also going to be games where they're all going to push up on you and it's going to be a battle, you know, for them to try to touch your base. Um, so the biggest thing with being a back player is to be patient. And you also have to be aware of what's going on because you have to be looking at the field and seeing where people are, or your own team is getting taken out of. If you're playing back, you're basically waiting for the other team to come up to shoot at you. So you need to be watching where your players are getting taken out from. Um, the thing that I notice is that a lot of back players, what happens is, is they'll be facing this way and be like, okay, I'm going to plug the first person that comes down this trail and all of a sudden you're out and you turn around and you look and the, and the whole team's come up behind you. So as a back player, you need to pick yourself a really good spot to where you can scan the whole field and you need to kind of feel out where the where your players are losing bodies from because chances are that's where the push is going to happen. They're not going to jump over the top of the people that are on the right side. They're going to take out everybody that's on the left side and push past them. So if you're facing this way, ready to go, and you never turn around to look to realize that oh, everybody you know on your left just got taken out, well, they're going to come right up behind you and then you just you know you just failed as a job as a back player. So those are some of the key differences and, and, and some of the um, little basic, basic strategies of where to play in woods ball. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I'm going to start doing more and more shows here today on uh, go, going into being a front player, going into being a mid player, going into being a back player. I'm also going to show you some counter strategies and some other stuff. But I wanted to, first off, you need to be honest with yourself. What position do I feel most comfortable playing in woods ball? And then from there, you can make your skills just way better by, by going deeper and deeper into that position. So more episodes coming up today.